Hey everybody, this is a much requested video, but I'm doing it especially for someone who is special to me that requested it. My sister-in-law and I were talking this weekend and she said, you know, I'd really like to see the behind the scenes of how you film this videos because I have a feeling it's not quite as simple as plopping down a camera, pressing go. And it started that way <laughs> almost six years ago, but it has certainly evolved and it is still evolving. So I am going to walk you through how I film for my regular videos, the ones where I'm not moving around, and I'm gonna do it using my vlogging camera, which I'm just gonna show you really briefly um, so you get a little bit of the vlogging stuff as well. And that noise in the background is Bosley who's decided to start strolling around just as I hit record. So for my vlogging videos, and for all of my videos for the past couple of years up until about mid-November, early December, this is the camera that I use to film videos. And this is, you'd think by now I would know the name of it, it's a Sony, but it has the most ridiculous name. It's like this, there it is, the Sony RX100 three. There are two predecessors and for all I know they've come out with a fourth. The reason I picked the Sony was at the time this was one of the only cameras that could do this. So I'm going to have you see what I see. So I'm going to turn it on and you can see what I'm looking at. It might be blinding. Okay so it has a pop-up screen so I can see when I'm vlogging. I can see if I'm in frame or oh, that didn't help. I can see if I'm in frame um, I'm trying to make sure I'm in frame on the, on the monitor in front of me too. So this is a great vlogging camera. I know a lot of, I'm going to turn this off. I know a lot of vloggers use the Canon. I think it's the GX7. Um, I, I think this one is light. I can't remember why I picked this, to be honest. Um, I don't know if the Canon was out yet. I think it was still in the early stages. This was out. I wanted it when I wanted it and I bought it. Um, I don't regret this purchase. I do not treat this very well. I just literally, I don't put it in a case. I just throw it in my purse so I always have it because you just don't know when those vlogging moments are gonna happen and if you have it in a case, then you unzip the case and then you miss your vlogging moment. So it's a little beat up. It has some neat little features. It's great at still photography. You can mess with the um, depth of field and get a bit of blur, um, especially on still photography, but a little bit on on video as well. It films in HD and all that good stuff. It's a great little camera. I am not going to replace it. Any, I will replace it when it breaks, but until then, this is the guy that I'm going to use for all of my vlogging. And there are lots of interesting settings and things you can do with this. I have not bothered to learn any of those. So this is the vlogging camera and I really do love it a lot. It's worked well for all of us, right? Now I'm going to um, use that camera to show you all the stuff that, it, that I can see that you can't and walk you through it. I do want to stress again, this is a work in progress. This is a lot of technology that I still have not mastered. I got the camera that I use to film now in December, I believe is when I really started using it. And it is a majorly huge learning curve. So I'm still working on that and trying to figure out what lenses I want and sound and all that. And before we get into the more equipment, I just want to stress, if you are thinking about making YouTube videos or doing anything with any kind of camera um, work, don't do what I did. Research, research, research before you make major purchases because these things are not, for the most part, inexpensive and it's really hard to justify making another purchase after you've already spent hundreds if not thousands of dollars. So that's my advice. All right, enough babbling, let's get on to the fun part. All right, I have unhooked myself from the microphone and now you're gonna see what I see when I sit down. So lately I've been filming in my dining room, which requires me to completely dismantle the dining room. However, I think I figured out a plan so that I don't have to do that again. But this is the setup I've been using for the last few months. So normally my dining room table sits under this lamp. Obviously it's not on. I move the table to the side, I roll up the rug, push everything over there. This is a kitchen table, kitchen table. This is a kitchen chair, oh my goodness. Um, I got from Ballard Designs actually. Could stand to wash that cushion. Behind me is my little setup my that I would have anyway, not just for videos, but I mean I have this on my buffet in my dining room and I'm gonna actually probably change out some of this in a couple of weeks for spring. I The reason why, let me turn around. The reason why I moved the table is because I like having the back of me be a little bit fuzzy when I film, so there needs to be some distance between me and the background. If I'm pressed right up against 
the uh, buffet like it normally would be if I'm sitting at the table, there's not enough separation between me and the buffet and it won't be fuzzy. So I've moved the table so I can sit a little farther away. Why I haven't just figured out that I could leave the table where it is and just sit on the other side of the table facing out, I don't know. I just thought of that this morning. Okay, so I sit here and here's what I see. So let's go through piece by piece. This light and this light are part of a kit. They came with everything that you see. Um, it comes with this, with the tripods, comes with the light bulb, and it comes with the umbrella. Now, up until two or three videos ago, I had the umbrellas facing the other way so that I saw the umbrella and not the light bulb. I've since switched them around so the light is pointing, pointing, <laughs> sorry, it is pointing and reflecting back at me, and I have noticed a huge difference in the quality of the film and so have you guys. You've mentioned it looks even better than normal. That's what all I did was flip the umbrellas around. So that's that. Let's go back to what else I see. Right here I have a little like snack table that I've set my monitor on. My monitor in this case is my MacBook Air and this is what I see. I still have the camera on which is why you can see. It's a software that comes with the camera that we'll talk about and that way I can see you know if I'm in shot, especially if I'm holding up a product and over here I can mess a little bit with like the uh, fuzziness, so to speak, and, and just all kinds of fun things. I cannot, I have not yet mastered focusing remotely. So um, since Michael works from home now, usually when I'm filming, he's standing on the other side of the camera and he can, you know, make sure it's all focused and then he goes back and does his thing. I can push record from that thing. So that's what goes on there and it's connected with an, um, let's see, just a USB cord. It's USB on one side and I think micro USB on the other end and I ordered that from Amazon and I got I think a six or nine foot long cord so I can be pretty far away from the camera. The other things that you see right here, this is a tripod actually that I bought for vlogging and it's too short so a lot of times it's a microphone stand. I picked up this microphone. I do not remember the name of it. It's a lavalier type microphone. I will link it below. I got it from Amazon. It does have great sound, um, but it doesn't work well when there's two people unless you place it just so. And um, I usually clip it to my clothes now, but sometimes I'll clip it literally to this little bit here and then place it just in front of me. This is the Canon T6i. It's part of the Rebel family and on the lens here today, I have my 50 millimeter lens. We'll talk about lenses in a little bit. Um, I love this thing. I, I love the touch screen. I love this, it flips out, and I can technically see myself in that LCD screen if I had eagle eye vision, which I don't, which is why I hook it up to this guy. And, um, I mean, the quality of the film and all the things it can do, it's just pretty amazing. So that's that. Then I've turned off the light, but this little guy is my Diva light or a ring light, and it is mounted to a Manfrotto tripod. I have two Manfrotto tripods, one for the, tri one for the light and one for the camera. You can mount the camera directly onto the light, but I like this setup just a little bit better. It gives me a little more flexibility if I want to move things around. These tripods are unbelievable. They are so sturdy and so easy to work with and relatively inexpensive as well. Um, I should mention that the Diva light here, or ring light, Diva's the brand name, but it's a ring light. This guy lends a little light to my face, but primarily just makes my eyes look brighter. The camera itself, I ordered on Amazon actually. It's a creator kit. It's the Canon T6i creator kit, and it comes with the camera, the stock lens. Um, I think it may have come with an SD card, and this guy. This is a Rode microphone. It's a boom mic. It plugs, it slides into a slot on top of the camera and then plugs right into the sound card or the sound, like a headphone jack. Um, remember, this is a video for YouTubers who do beauty videos, so <laughs> maybe not as technical as some of the full-on 
how to for photography people. Okay, keep that in mind. I'm just having a laugh at myself. Anyway, this is the standard one and it, the sound worked for a little while really well and then it, all of a sudden it didn't. There was this crackling noise all the time. Now on my wish list is a more, a higher end version of the same brand, just more, just more, more money, bigger. It comes with like a fuzzy thing. It looks like a giant piece of fur wrapped around it. Um, I've noticed a lot of YouTubers use that. It's like, I think the next step or two up from this is the intro level guy, I think. Um, but I still have it. I haven't thrown it out yet. That came in the kit. And then this is the kit lens. This is a Canon 18 to 55 millimeter lens. This thing's neat. It has autofocus. It can actually zoom with this guy. It gets bigger, smaller. Um, and I have used this a couple of times to do tutorials or when I'm holding up things that I want the camera to zoom in on. It's a work in progress how to get that to zoom just right without making you all nauseous, um, but I'm working on it. Now I'm filming right now with the 50 millimeter, I think it's a wide angle pancake lens. It's an STM, which means that if I did put it on autofocus, which I don't, but if I did put it on autofocus, it's silent. So you can't hear the little, like when I film with my vlog camera, you can hear this little whirring noise when I zoom in or out in, or, yes, when I zoom in or out. With the STM lenses, uh, you cannot hear the camera whirring. You can hear Bosley, but you can't hear the camera. Um, and the 50 millimeter, it's an F 1.8, which means I can get this nice fuzz. That's pretty much the most shallow depth of field. The more shallow the depth of field, the fuzzier the background gets. Um, so that's why I picked that one. And because it's a 50 millimeter, the angle, it's tighter. It's much more close. Now I also have the <sighs> Canon 24 millimeter. It doesn't give as deep of a blur as the other one. It's sort of in between what I have going on now and the stock one, which offers almost no blur, but it's a little bit of a wider angle so I can get a bigger frame. And that I like more for when I'm doing tutorials or a haul where I'm holding things up because this is actually a pretty tight shot. I should be able to hold my hands out wider. And yes, I'm looking down just to see where I'm getting cut off. But anyway, this is, this is how I do what I do almost every day. Let me know if you have any questions. Like I mentioned, I will link everything that I can find, like everything in the description box below, including everything that I'm wearing. Uh, I hope this was helpful for those of you that are interested in getting into YouTube, maybe filming some beauty videos. If you're already doing it, you just are curious to see what other people are using. Like me, I love these kinds of videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Hey everybody, I don't know if it's because my birthday is coming up next month or we just finished touring a bunch of colleges and getting Jake settled for school next year, but I'm feeling kind of nostalgic.